discouragement will do. The woman take her life. And so many people that have committed suicide and take their life. But I'm trying to find a scripture, and if you don't find it, we'll do it another time. But there's a scripture that I came across, and it's um, Proverbs 31, verse 8 and 9. He said, when somebody is down and out, you have to cry for them. You cannot remain silent when somebody is going through problem. You cannot remain silent. I'm trying to find it. You cannot remain silent when somebody is going through all those problems that, that they are going through. You have to, you have to speak out for them. Yeah, Proverbs 31, 8 and 10. Let them drink and get and forget the poverty and remember their troubles no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Inquire for justice for those who are crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and to see that justice is being done. And that's what Proverbs is saying to us. I know these people is marching and they are doing all these things, but it's so much injustice is going on in the world. And since we are on social media, it brings out more. You know, when you watch that television and see a guy squeeze the life out of someone else, it grip your heart. Yes. And even when paramedics come, yes. you're still squeezing the guy. Oh. You want to take a pull, but you would never release your knee. You mean to kill a person. So, so much injustice. And so sometimes you see these things and you get discouraged. You are discouraged even to the depth of your heart. When I look on the TV, to, you know, um, yesterday I was looking at trips on um, Peru, somewhere about in Brazil. And I saw how they have to take those people to the hospital. They have to take them by a boat. And the old stretchers that we used to make with the four, the four hundred. And they take hours and hours to reach a doctor. They are dying like a fly. And when I think about the arms raised in this world, oh, Russia competing with America, Canada, the, 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 the United Nations, and all these other countries competing with arms raised, NATO and all the rest, and buying all these weapons and missiles and planes, and people is dying here. Can we fight the coronavirus? All the weapons you have, can you send it out? Yes. Right now and say, let it, these weapons attack the coronavirus. Can you have no much for it? So some of these weapons that we are accumulating, they're talking about North Korea, missile and this. You don't, you don't hear anybody talking about it anymore, do you? No. They're not talking about the address no more. No. The coronavirus is bigger than it. No. They have no much for this thing. All, right. All the money they spend. Buying all these weapons, ammunition, it better than they invest in medical and even help the poor people to live. But they spend money rusting against each other and don't have no use. And in, in the last days, that's the same thing will happen. In the days of Noah, so shall it be. All what they accumulate, even your own personal wealth. You cannot spend it the way you want to spend it now. You want to go on a vacation. Things change. Things And when they always said in the Bible that God can destroy this world with a flood. Now we can see how quickly this coronavirus spread throughout the world. This is a wake up call. If never a time you need the Lord, it's now. You say, oh, our redemption to our life. Look up. This is a serious time. This is not the time to criticize. This is not the time to show this God. This is the time to look from the rock where the hell coming from. Because listen, we wear gloves, we wear masks. We could be a, we could have stayed in our house 24 hours a day. But if it's a coronavirus, we still catch us. But if God protects us, 
If you be a fence around you, no weapon can catch you. I'm not saying you should protect yourself, no, because we have to follow what the government says. And if you're not healthy enough to be in church, the best place for you to be is at home. And that's why we get the live stream that you can watch the service from home in the comfort of your home. And you need to watch it. But you need to look up. Because our redemption joy at night. John knows Elijah was fed and he was strengthened. And sometimes we need strength. We need a second touch. The only way you can get over these things, you need a second touch. God has to touch you. He touched John. He touched Peter and he said, when he said, come and die. And he did the same thing for Elijah. Yeah. He never said, come on, that but he prepared me for him. We are going on that same job because I want to speak on that for a while this morning. Our next one. Yes. He said, come on, down. But he strengthened him and he went in the strength of that food 40 yes. days and 40 nights. Someone can pray for you. The Lord can touch you with a gentle touch. And you can go through the line and stay. And not be defeated. Because the Lord God Almighty is with you. And he will see you through the end. He is with you in all your troubles. In all your trials. And all your crosses. And he know when you are despondent. He know when you are despondent, yes. and the Lord will make a way yes. out of you. All you have to do is to trust Him. Yes. So it's to trust in God. Yes. I know He watches me. Don't be as roll and stop the clouds, my heavenly yes. Father, watches over me. And so, therefore, He went to Mount Ora. Everybody knows the story where David went in the rock and did the Ten Commandment. And listen to the story, we need to read this over. God said, I am passing by. How many times God tells, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He wants to show himself strong to you because sometimes we are discouraged and we lose faith. Yeah. So you have to show himself and say, I'm still with you, my brother. Glory to God. I'm still with you, my son. Yeah. And just to back up a little bit, I have a friend that a couple years ago, he came home and when he opened the front door, his wife died right in front of the door. He was trying to get out and she couldn't get out. And the first person to call was me and my wife. And we went over there. And the guy go on his, the couch and he put a cover over his head and he would not get a word from him. And sometimes, sometimes he just not want to speak because he had discouraged. Isolation can cause discouraged and people opinion. That's another thing you gotta watch. Oh, yeah. People's opinion will cause you to get this story. And sometimes your own opinion because you want to do things too much. You take on too much task and you can handle. And you get yeah, you down. So sometimes we need to take a break and get some rest. And that's what the Lord did with Elijah. He says, stand still and see salvation. Yeah. Not of man, not of the president, but of, of the Lord. And so therefore, he went to Mount Ora, and the first thing that happened was a mighty windstorm. And the Bible described that the rock was shattered, break asunder, so you can imagine how strong that wind was. God is throwing in his power. He's throwing in his mighty power. But he was not in the windstorm. He was not in the windstorm. And then an earthquake. And you know what an earthquake it will shake up the whole place. But even the earthquake and the wind, Elijah was still safe in the arm of the Lord. Because he shake it up. But he never hurt Elijah. He will shake everything. And you will remain standing. In spite of the shaking that is going on around him. Shake up the mountain. But the 
Elijah both my home. And then he sent a fire. Was Elijah burned? He saw the fire. But he was protected. God will protect you. He saw him because he lose confidence in God. He said, I'm jealous. Because they have torn on the altar and killed the prophet, and I alone is left. You see, sometimes you don't know what God has in store for you. I might be preaching here and leave. I am the only one here. No, God has somebody out there. They might not even get saved. They might not even be born yet. But they will come forth when he's ready. So Elijah, me, if it was just him, some people might not go to school if I don't do this. We're going we're gonna go to heaven and bless him. No! God is in charge. Yes, sir. Don't forget that. He's in charge, man. He's still in charge. Still in With all the 128,000 people that died so far. Yes. He's still in charge. Yes. He never quit. Yes. He's in charge. Yes. And so. After the earthquake, a so, strong, small voice. That's the way God called to you. He whispered to you. He whispered to you, Elijah, what are you doing here? And he repeated the same thing twice. And that's why I know he was disappointed. Because he said the first time, I was jealous. And now he's threatened now. And he said the same thing again. And so sometimes, when you go through discouragement, you say things which you should not say. Because you're discouraged. Right. You trouble people that you should not even trouble. You complain when you should not complain. Right. But it's because of this discouragement that you do certain things. Sometimes you hook up with people that you shouldn't even hook up with. Right. Because you're discouraged. You cannot think straight. You cannot remember that God keep and he saved and he sanctified. You got to go back in the recess of your mind and to see what the Lord has done for you in the past. And so this, I don't want to be repeated because I want to pick up on this another time. But this morning I'm telling you, if discouragement don't come your way as yet, brace yourself for it. Sometimes you're discouraging your own children, your husband, your wife, your family, you have very discouraged so that you don't want to go home. Jesus. So then you run the traffic light because you have discouraged your mind is taken away. Jesus. And not because you're serving God. Not because you're a Christian, you're not immune from these things. All right. You know what, what Peter said? Peter said, I have left everything yes. to follow you. I leave wife, mother, sister. What do I get? He said he will sit at the right hand and judge the twelve scribes of Israel. So God has a reward for you. When you work hard, when you toil, and you see that there's no fruit in your labor, don't give up. Because God is coming in the morning. You might put everything you want into your family and they abandon you. But still, hold on. To God I'm changing hand. But this world went alone in circle. Yeah. I was thinking the other day and I said, when you reach certain age and you, life doesn't work anything anymore. I know. You don't fit into life anymore, Bishop. Sure. When you speak about it, you come in that somebody has to hold you by your hand and lead you where you don't want to go. Yeah. There come times when you all by yourself and take your driver's license. Everything happens, and then you get discouraged. But if you have the word of God written down in your heart, you can meditate on the word day and night. He said, My word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin now. And so sometimes we come to church, we come not just to look at each other, we come to be encouraged. We come to get the solid work of God that when you go there next week, you can able to live. When you can see all the killing and the hanging that is going wrong from four or five hundred years ago and getting right, you don't know. You got to look up. 
for your redemption, joy of man. I just want to close with this little song. Why would you feel this courage? And I want to pray for someone this morning, this afternoon, rather. Why should the shadows? Should I feel this courage? Why should the shadows come? Why should my